Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kwawan Zhang, and I am presenting <coughs> part two of gravitational field shielding and mass radius relation for a neutron star. Okay. The point is also going on. And the objectives. Last time I investigated the gravitational field shielding with scalar field for a neutral object. This time we're gonna I, I can I I am continuing investigating the gravitational gravitational field shielding, but this time it's uh, electric charged objects. Uh, this is the general gravitational field shielding with charge. Um, this is phi, the scalar field, which is equal to alpha negative, uh, the square root of negative alpha squared times uh, psi to the power of 4 plus 1 plus alpha squared times psi to the uh, negative 2. And psi is, is r minus b over r plus b and all that power one, uh, root 1 over root 3. And B is the singular, the critical radius that I said last time, um, which is equal to G times M over the square root of 3 times 1 plus alpha squared times C squared. And G is the gravitational constant, which is 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11. And M is the mass, the 1.5 solar mass, which is 3 times 10 to the 30. And alpha, alpha is the charge mass, uh, charge mass ratio, which is uh, it's equal to the electric charge over two times the square root of the gravitational constant times the the mass. And for here, this is a weak approximation, where uh, the singular radius is very very small compared to r. So this this so what what uh, what this means is that R is very very big, and so when R is very big, then there is weak shielding from the gra the gravity. There's no there's weak or no gravitational shielding. And how I got this um, from here, we did a series expansion, uh, and it was it was very complicated. We used the first two terms of the series expansion to get to here. And <clears throat> we can see a very big um, detection here. Uh, it, it's very detectable here. And this part is pretty small, so it's ne uh, negligible. Uh, for here, we can see that this part, this part is <laughs> the, Newtonian, the Newtonian gravitational uh, field and times this um, electric charge. If if the electric if the charge mass ratio is say root three, then this is the, the g is basically a little bit more than two times the Newtonian gravitation. So there's a huge difference from there. And from that. We we want to we want to scale the mass so that the first term is uh, the Newtonian gravitation field. So what we did was we assumed that that this whole thing this whole thing is the scaled mass the measurable mass, and that's how we got this equation. And uh, uh, this is all for weak fields weak fields no shielding or weak weak or no shielding. And here, last time, I said the extinction coefficient that the Hui, uh, Hui Rino, Ma Maharana, uh, he, he assumed there was an extinction coefficient. Dr. Dane uh, derived this coefficient using that, using this, this formula, and uh, setting it equal to this formula, and we get this. And this is the derived uh, extinction coefficient. And the, the results we got at uh, one one meter was at when when um, when the radius was at one meter, we got a very no when alpha is one, we got a really uh, small extinction coefficient, which is good because it's uh, it, uh, for the for the gravitational shielding of course. 
And here's a graph of the extinction coefficient versus alpha. Uh, from at the at a different at, at increasing of no well this shows that the extinction coefficient uh, related to in relation to alpha that is in, ex, insignificant because uh, as you see as it, when when um, alpha is around one to uh, zero to one there's a slight increase in the coefficient at different r. And then, and then, in all the other alphas, the the h goes to constant, so there's really not much uh, significance. But at different r's, you can see a huge significant change between the eight the coefficients. So there's so as e, as r increases, the h also increases. So there's a big relation between those two. And here's the graph of um, the graph, the gravitational field uh, in relation to the Newtonian gravitational field. This is the unscaled mass, uh, basically, yeah, the unscaled mass, where mass isn't, yeah. Um, at this point, there's you can see that as r increases, uh, as r gets big, the, the the gravitational there's no there's absolutely no field, no no gravitational field. But when it, when r gets smaller, there's act there's shielding and this decreases. And uh, for here, this is the when mass is scaled so that um, the Newtonian gravitational is the highest gravitational being that can occur. Uh, and then you can see that as, as from different alpha, as alpha increase, there's a increase. Uh, as r gets smaller, there's a increase in the. Now there's a decreasing gravitational shield. Now there's a there's a decreasing the gravitational shield, which means an increase in the the shielding, the gravitational shield. I said that wrong. There's a in, there's a decrease in the gravitational field, the the gravity the gravity. There's no gravitational field, so the shielding is strong. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And here's the and here's because the scalar field at different alpha uh, different uh, alpha. You can see that when as uh, uh, for big alphas, alpha equals a hundred. There's a huge change uh, versus the phi. So there's a huge relation between the phi and alpha. And uh, like last time when, when we saw the one where alpha equals zero, as um, r tends to be, uh, there's it goes to one, so there's a huge um, phi. And big phi means um, big shielding. Yeah. And then as r goes to uh, greater than b, then there's absolutely no shooting. 